Porsche is going all in on its bet to save the internal combustion engine. Despite the success of the Porsche Taycan launch in 2019, Porsche does not believe that lithium ion batteries are going to be the ultimate solution for decarbonizing the transportation sector. The Porsche 911 has a massive and very lengthy heritage, and it seems like the company wants to preserve that with its flagship boxer engine. Their goal now is not simply to invest in electrification and hydrogen, but actually find a way to save the internal combustion engine itself using synthetic fuels. The company just recently announced a new plant in Chile, which is going to produce renewable-based methanol to make gasoline from solar and wind energy. Does this strategy make any sense in the renewable energy landscape? And how does it compare to going with battery electric or in some cases, hydrogen fuel cells? In this video, I want to address those questions by analyzing Porsche's strategy, the benefits and drawbacks of synthetic fuels, as well as why hydrogen would most likely make the most sense for someone like Porsche. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, folks, I think it's in our best interest to first define what exactly a synthetic fuel is. You see, most gasoline today is produced by digging out crude oil from the ground, processing it, refining it, and then supplying it at commercial gas stations. When you obviously combust gasoline, you release a lot of CO2, and that has been the whole reason why we are transitioning to electric vehicles. Not only are lithium ion batteries more energy dense than in some cases gasoline engines, but they are more energy efficient, produce less heat, and obviously reduce emissions. Hydrogen fuel cells also play a critical role in this transition because they provide an even higher energy density than lithium ion while being able to produce electricity with zero emissions. But Porsche believes that the future is not necessarily going to be pure electrification, but rather decarbonization of conventional engines. And you see what Porsche here is betting on is that the 1.3 billion internal combustion engine vehicles on the road today are going to take generations to wipe off the face of the earth. Despite the insane amount of sales we're seeing of electric vehicles, that is just a very, very small dent in the overall fleet across earth of internal combustion engine. It's most likely going to take another 100 years for them to be completely phased out. And because of that, e-fuels could be a viable alternative in the medium term. And as for how exactly e-fuels are manufactured, well, just like this sound, they are basically fuels like gasoline or diesel, but made with renewable energy. You see, gasoline is a hydrocarbon, meaning it has bonds of hydrogen atoms and carbon atoms, which means that when you combust it, not only do you release a lot of heat, but you release a lot of CO2 because the carbon reacts with the oxygen in the air. But because the production process of gasoline is also very carbon intensive, if you used renewable energy to produce the fuel in the first place by carbon capturing excess carbon from the atmosphere, then you have a net zero process in theory, even if your fuel is being combusted and releasing CO2. And that right there is the bet that Porsche is making with its highly innovative fuels, which is another word for e-fuel. The cars that Porsche is going to run these on are still going to release emissions just like any other gasoline vehicle. But because the energy used to make the fuel captures carbon from the atmosphere, they're betting that this is a carbon neutral process resulting in no net emissions to the environment. Essentially, this is a reverse of the steam methane reforming process, which is typically used to produce hydrogen for industrial applications. Now you're pulling out carbon and nitrogen from the atmosphere, combining it with hydrogen that is made from renewable electricity, and then using that as a feedstock for gasoline based engines. And on paper, this sounds purely genius. However, if you look at the nuances and the details, you realize that this problem is a lot more complex to solve, at least for what Porsche is trying to achieve. And why do I believe that? Well, because what e-fuels offer can make a lot of sense for certain applications like racing and aviation. 
However, for commercial vehicles that are used by passengers and consumers across the earth, they might not make the most sense. Consumers that are apart from enthusiasts do prefer the driving experience of a battery electric vehicle. They don't necessarily want the complexity and the noise or the emissions associated with an internal combustion powertrain. Plus, making e-fuel is highly inefficient, just like making hydrogen is today, although the technology for hydrogen is improving at a rapid scale to achieve round-trip efficiency north of 50 to 60%. And this efficiency problem truly matters for e-fuels because you are obviously combusting energy and producing heat at the consumption end. For something like hydrogen fuel cells or battery electric, you are not combusting anything and there are little to no moving parts. You are simply converting electrical energy to electrical energy. In this case, you are converting a fuel to electrical and mechanical energy, which is more inefficient. And because it does release carbon emissions, this efficiency is more critical for such a process. What happens is as this lower efficiency results in higher investment cost and higher end cost to consumers, and because right now the market for internal combustion engine vehicles compared to battery electric is much smaller, there is an inherent disadvantage e-fuels can provide to OEMs and supply chain partners. And this has certainly been the sole reason why something like E85 and flex fuel has not taken off in the US over the past 30 years. E85 has been around for a very long time, but the lower performance, the higher cost, and the lower advantage it provides to the driving experience has been a key dissuader for most consumers. However, don't get me wrong folks, e-fuels have a massive opportunity in the aviation and racing sectors. Just like hydrogen flopped in some cases for the consumer industry with something like the Toyota Mirai, Hydrogen offers more benefits to something like energy storage, heavy duty transport, and even aviation. And because e-fuels use hydrogen as a feedstock for the production process, this means e-fuels can make a massive dent in the aviation industry, in which case liquid fuels make a lot more sense than something like compressed hydrogen. Because although hydrogen is extremely light, it does take up a lot of volume, and that can take up key space on an aircraft where liquid fuels today provide the best volumetric and gravimetric energy density. And on top of that, the ultimate application for e-fuels can be in the racing sector, where liquid fuels today dominate most powertrains. Using compressed hydrogen gas could make sense, but because the infrastructure and logistics can be very complicated for a racing series that travels from one circuit to the other, e-fuels made from renewable electricity could be the perfect solution. Especially because you can control the amount of energy you are burning, and you have a limited amount of races you do throughout the year. And as we all know, modern racing like Formula One and NASCAR are primarily driven by their internal combustion engine nature, and converting them to electric motors would be a massive blow to the industry. And although at $45 a gallon, most e-fuels won't really make sense for consumers, for racing series that are often subsidized and have massive sponsors, this can be a very achievable feat. What do you guys think? Does Porsche's bet on e-fuels make any sense? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As usual guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.